is Introduction to Android. A few things about the time of this class, because this class has changed from a four credit hour class to a three credit hour class, uh, maybe a year ago or something like that. We've got to adjust the times in the schedule. So the times are a little different than are listed on your schedule. So the class itself, the lecture itself, will be from 5.15 to 6.05, okay? I think it's from 5.15 to 6.30 in your schedule. Your lab will be from 6.05 to 6.55. So, it'll be a little shorter than is listed on the schedule. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the basics of the class, how it's structured. I know a fair number of you have had me in other classes, so you probably know how I organize things. But I'll spend a minute or two, a few minutes, uh, going over the material in Canvas. Then we'll start looking at, uh, uh, we'll start talking about um, the, sort of the anatomy of uh, an Android application how it's put together, because it's different than um, maybe maybe stuff that you've done before. So we'll look at that, and we'll talk a little bit about installing Android Studio, and we'll talk a little bit about the first assignment. First assignment is pretty easy, in my opinion. Um, you don't have to write any code. Um, if you have a laptop, you're sort of encouraged to bring it and use it, simply because Kind of like I said, it's much easier for me to have everything on my laptop configured the way that it needs to be without having to go to the lab and spending 10 minutes getting everything configured right and so on. So you're encouraged to, you certainly can you do the assignments in the lab, but I think it would go smoother if you, if you could bring, a, if you have a laptop uh, to bring it. And also, um, uh, you know, to, to make sure you've installed Android Studio on your machine and, and get it working. That, that's kind of the goal of this week, is to get that installed and start looking at the anatomy of an application as we go into it. All right, so let me pull up Canvas. it's faster network here, I'm going to try to download or upload my 243 classes video while I'm here. Since I've done this, this I gotta put this one. 
There we go. All right. Almost did it, even as I was saying it. All right. So we'll go to Android. Intro to Android. The home page is the uh, page that will show uh, a list of announcements. All right, so you're encouraged to check um, between classes. You know, we have classes on Tuesday and Thursday. You're encouraged to check on Wednesday or during the day on Thursday. And then you're encouraged to check sometime between Friday and class on Tuesday. The reason for this is I post uh, announcements here. And what sort of things will I post an announcement? Well, first and foremost, if I'm going to miss a class because I'm ill. As soon as I find out, I post it to there. So it could, might be able to save you a trip in if you check that. I, I should say that first in all my classes. That will encourage everyone to be sure to check Canvas. They'll check, you'll check Canvas every five minutes now to see if I'm canceling class, right? Um, I also post if, uh, I, if there's a question that seems to be kind of common, you know? I try my best when I create assignments and, and to write things to be as clear as possible, but it is, it's interesting when you uh, are trying to communicate to people how people can like read it in a different way and take it a different way and misunderstand your intent. So sometimes people will point something out and I'll point, I'll, I'll make a note to clarify something. This is what I meant on lab one when I said get a screen print, all right, if, if you're not sure what a screen print is for example. Um, also, if, that, if I have things, unresolved issues from class, and that happens, um, you know, a few times a semester that maybe I'm working on something and I can't quite get it right, you know, and it's difficult when you're speaking and trying to write code and trying to present something, and you all know how it's been in programming, how sometimes you just looking right at the problem, but you can't see it. And that happens to me just like it happens to anyone else. So if I have a problem in class and something doesn't run correctly, um, I, will, I will say, well, you know what, I'll, I'll figure it out and I'll post the correct solution. So I do that sort of thing as well. So it's good just to check a few times a week. All right? Here is the syllabus, which we'll spend some time looking at. Has anyone been to the bookstore and gotten the book? Okay. I found it on the LCC library. Okay. The name of it. Okay. All right, good. Because one of my other classes, they, they messed up the bookstore order, so they didn't have them in the bookstore. But um, All right, so that, that's good to know. Uh, this top information here, the point of all this, and I'm not going to read every word to you because I'm not, I don't like to do that. It's boring, I think, for you. It's boring for me. And you can read it, so read the syllabus. But I do like to sort of emphasize the things that maybe, um, you know, I, I feel need emphasizing. The top part of the syllabus really, in, to a large degree, indicates all the ways you can contact me. All right? So you can contact me via email, either regular email or through Canvas. You can contact me uh, through phone. Generally speaking, email is better than phone. All right, because I only check my phone when I'm on campus typically. My email I check pretty regularly. In fact, if, if you email me something and you don't get an answer in a little more than a day, like if two days have gone by and I haven't given you an answer, um, you're free to send me a reminder and say, hey, I sent you an email a couple days back and I didn't get an answer. And, and I won't take any offense to that because my goal is to answer my email daily. And again, when I say daily, I might answer it in the morning one day and the evening the next day. So it might not be exactly 24 hours, but within any two calendar days, I try to answer, respond to my email every day. There's a few ways that you can talk to me if you have questions or problems with the assignment. One of them is, obviously, during the lecture itself. Look around. If you have a question, that means 20% of the students in this class have a question. All right? Pardon me? There's only five students, right, exactly. 
If two of you have a question, then 40%. If three of you, then you, there's a majority, <laughs> all right? So therefore, that's one of the nice things about a small class, is I can give you more individual attention. So what I'm saying is, if you have a question, there's an old sort of teacher proverb that says, if one student has a question, there's a good chance some other, someone else might have a question. So if you have questions, by all means ask, all right? At the very worst, what I will tell you is, well, maybe that's something we'll cover in the next lecture, maybe if I don't want to get ahead of myself. Or maybe I'll say, hey, that sounds specific to your assignment, all right? Or whatever, and we'll talk about it during lab. Well, the point is, is there is never a problem to ask a question in class. Uh, the great thing about a small class like this is we can we have the luxury of doing that. Uh, the second probably most common place that you could ask me questions would be during the lab time. All right? And, you know, the lab time is for the most part um, your time to work on stuff. Uh, people ask me if the lab time is required. Uh, my answer is the lab time's a good time for you to work and with me there to give you a hand and all that, but it's not absolutely required. I don't take attendance or anything like that in lab, all right? Um, but you can ask me during that. What if you're still having problems and <coughs> you might be trying stuff and I can't answer all your questions in lab, I can't answer them in the classroom, then you can make arrangements to see me during other times. Um, I will, I will likely have to find some office hours by next class that you can see me in. In addition, you can see me during other classes' labs, all right? I have two, uh, I have three other classes uh, that I teach on campus this semester. I have one uh, Monday morning, I have one Monday, Monday and Wednesday morning, I have one Monday and Wednesday afternoon. I have a class Tuesday and Thursday morning, and then I have this class. So if you're on campus during those times, or if you're available, you're welcome to sit in on any of my other classes. I just come to lab, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. By the same token, I've made the same offer to the students of my other classes. So if someone in one of my other classes is having a hard time, they're welcome to come in during our lab. And generally speaking, that works out for everyone, because typically, if people are working along in lab, and everything's going smooth, there's not a lot for me to do. Just sort of watch and enjoy the hard work that you guys are doing, right? All right, occasionally I might grade stuff or, or answer emails or whatever, but that way by inviting people, that gives a sort of extra time that they can, uh, the student can come to see me. Now, if you can't make it on campus during other times, there are other options as well. Uh, you can email me uh, questions, certainly. You can uh, call me on the phone, although that's, again, slightly less recommended than the others. We can make arrangements to Skype or have an online chat, all right? So, and if none of these other things work for you, let me know and we'll figure something out. If I need to come here, if I need to stay late on a Monday evening, I can do that or whatever. Um, I, I want to make it uh, so make it so that kind of no matter what your needs are, you know, I'll make sure that we can figure out something that I can address your needs and address your questions. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, my responsibility is to do my best to to teach you and to give good uh, assignments and to stimulate good discussions and provide good materials. One of your chief responsibilities is to let me know if it's not working for you, if there's something you don't understand. Because it's tough, you know, until I grade something, it's tough for me to see if you are getting it or not, right? People can be sitting there looking and, yeah, not in their head, looks like they're understanding it just fine, but they may be struggling with the lab assignment, all right? In which case, ask the question. One thing I will say, we'll be talking about, we, we will be using uh, Canvas to upload our assignments when you're done with them. The Dropbox is meant for completed assignments. If you have a problem with it, if you're not complete, complete with it, then you should email me instead of uploading it to the Dropbox. And there's a real simple reason for that, and that is I try to answer my email daily, whereas grading, I do that when I have time. So I do that more like on a weekly basis. Uh, so if you ask me a question and say, I can't get the Spanish translation of my page to show 
even though the machine, even though the device is set to Spanish or something like that. If you can't do that, don't just upload it and put that in the comments of the Dropbox. Email it to me. So the Dropbox is meant for stuff that you think, near as you know, is completed. All right? If you have a problem with it that you're aware of, you should be sending it to me via email or you should be talking about uh, it during lab or, or whatever. All right. First time using the wrong mouse, by the way. Was not done on purpose. This, uh, this course will introduce uh, the development of software applications, blah, 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 blah. This is important. All right? This should be in the back of your mind. So read through these on your own, and it should be in the back of your mind, because really everything in we do, that we do in this class relates one way or another to this stuff. Absolutely. Uh, one thing that you'll find is, is typically the first programming language that you learn is like the hardest one to learn because anything after that, then, you know, every language is going to have an if statement. Every language is going to have a loop. Every language is going to have an assignment statement. Now, there might be details that vary, but yeah, they will all have sort of the basic foundation. What is, the other thing that's different is the framework that you use to develop your applications with them. Uh, for example, ASP.NET, there's a framework. There's a set of, of uh, pre-built components that you can use in your application. Well, Android also has the same thing. They're different components, though, right? So both of them have components. The components sort of work in a sort of similar way and have a sort of similar purpose, but they're totally different components. Because again, one is mainly for web, applications or desktop applications and one is for handheld. So they're bound up to behave a little bit differently. This is your class. This is usually where I point out that, you know, if you have questions, ask them, but I sort of already did that. There's a list of college policies here that if you want more detail for them, um, please see the, the college catalog. My policy on late assignments is actually pretty flexible. I recognize that people have jobs, families, responsibilities, other classes, you know, especially at a community college. People have all those things. All right? And therefore, it's, it's easy that sometimes something has to go, right? Something, some, sometimes something has to slip. So I really just want to be kept in a loop, all right? So if you are ill, you don't have to tell me details about it. You don't have to bring a note from your doctor, all right? Just tell me. I missed a couple of, you know, I missed a class or two because I was sick. I'll, get, I'll try to get the assignment in by the weekend, and that's fine, all right? If you have personal issues, if you have work issues, again, not easy. All right, I respect your privacy. But just let me know that it's going to be late. Now, if that happens a couple times a semester, it doesn't matter at all to me, right? The problem gets into is if people become habitually late with each assignment, if people use my flexible policy as sort of a crutch. So if you are continually, continually becoming late to us, uh, on assignments, then we have to talk about it, all right? And we have to figure out what needs to happen. Maybe you need to spend extra time working on the homework. Maybe you have to make arrangements to come in uh, a couple times to get extra assistance or whatever, all right? So a few late things, no big deal. Continually late, and especially as if you fall, get further and further behind because it snowballs, then we should talk and we should figure out what's going on and we should figure out how we can get uh, everyone back on track. That's sort of the point of my lateness policy, all right? I want to do what I can and acknowledge all your other responsibilities and give you every opportunity to succeed in this class. So because of that, you know, you have a busy week at work and it puts you behind, okay, do what you can to catch up and try to do your best from here on in. All right. You can 
read the rest of that listed through here. One thing I do often is I give you the opportunity to redo an assignment. All right? <clears throat> if you think about it in the real world, if you do something that isn't correct for your boss, your bosses are going to say, well, that wasn't correct, but eh, we'll just leave it like it is, right? You have to correct it, right? If your web page was supposed to act a certain way and it doesn't, well, then you have to go and make it work the way that it was supposed to. So I will oftentimes deduct points if something is not correct and give you the opportunity to redo it. Um, I will give you some feedback about what's wrong, but it's sort of up to you to figure out exactly what's wrong and what you do need to do to correct that, right? Uh, for example, a classic assignment that I give in many of my classes, I don't know if I'll give in this class or not, I probably will, but we have to do a tuition calculator for Lane Community College. And LC has sort of a goofy tuition schedule where one to 12 credit hours, there's one rate, 13 through 18, you get charged a flat amount. So if you take 13 or 18 credit hours, you get charged the same thing. And then 18 and above, you get charged a different way. Well, maybe, uh, I won't say, for example, you forgot an if statement to check to see if it was greater than 19 or greater than 18. I might say something like tuition for amounts of credit hours greater than 19 is not correct. Or tuition calculation does not work for all values of credit hours or something like that. Because it's your job to figure out what's wrong. And again, I feel justified in doing that because you're getting points for figuring it out. All right? There is a final exam in this class. There used to be a midterm, too, but I cut that out and we just have a final. And we'll have approximately weekly assignments. I say approximately because uh, you are likely to have uh, some assignments that will span two weeks and they'll count double, um, but for the most part, weekly assignments. Here's a schedule with uh, an approximate list of what we're going to cover in the book along with the assignments that are due. And that's it as far as this kind of stuff is concerned. Do you have any questions about this? Okay, onward and upward. And we're gonna look by, we're gonna start by looking at a, uh, a program using Android Studio. And we'll start to tour Android Studio a little bit, and we will start to look at the anatomy of how a program is created. Um, Android Studio is uh, an IDE, all right? Is everyone familiar with what I mean when I say an IDE? integrated development environment. It's similar to Visual Studio would be for developing ASP.NET uh, applications. So in essence, it's a glorified text editor. Uh, yeah, except it does tons, tons, tons more. It generates files for you. It handles the compilation of your code. I mean, that, I mean, sorry, right. I meant to ask like, just pure writing code is essentially a glorified text yeah, it, it helps you with the writing of code. There is a visual uh, uh, component for, uh, for, the, for the GUI and so on. Although you can also see the code for the GUI as well. All right. Uh, in addition to the studio, you need uh, different platforms because, as you know, uh, there's a whole bunch of versions of Android that are out. Let's, let's look to see how many versions of Android there are. And they're named after sweet things. Yeah, really, that's a sweet tooth. Oh, look, and they're flying by. Froyo, gingerbread. It's kind of annoying, this interface. <laughs> Because I want to, I want to see like what the highest number is: 4.4, 4, 5.0, 6.0. All right, looks like it goes to 6.0. Within those, even there are different development uh, platforms. So, Android SDK. 
You see, there's a whole lot of those that relate to, um, that correspond to different versions of the um, Android operating system, but have different enhancements in them. All right, what will change from version to version? There might be new components introduced uh, in, in it, and there might be code changes for those components. So the point is, is that these API levels are very important because they'll help guide you to what you're developing for. So you might, you can specify when you develop an app that maybe I want to develop for API level 11 and higher. All right. Now, if you don't have that installed in Android Studio, it will ask you when you compile it, do you want to go and install it? So you probably will see a few times a semester when I go to run an application using Android Studio, that it will say, target not found, do you want to install? And I'll click install and I don't know, I'll tell jokes for five minutes while it installs and then we'll be ready to go again. Okay, so let me, so again, it's important to consider that there's different versions, not just of Android, but of the SDK as well. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna open up open up the examples from the textbook. All right. I'm gonna open up the welcome example. It's certainly a good thing to open as a first example. If you notice, there's a whole bunch of files in here. Uh, we can view them through the operating system, uh, but it probably would be better to view them via Android Studio. If you wanted to take this and install it or run it on your machine, you would need this folder. There's a link in Canvas that, that allows you to download these two, by the way. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say I want to open an existing Android Studio project. I can go and I can look on the desktop is the welcome application. Notice there's a welcome internationalized application. We may or may not look at that today. We'll probably look at that fairly soon. All right. But I'm going to click open to open this. And it'll give me a warning here that a certain directory doesn't exist. Use this directory instead, certainly. That simply indicates that it was transferred to a different machine. It is doing sort of the initial build now. Sort of takes a while to bring everything in and to import everything in. One thing we'll do at some point is create an application from scratch, but in this example, I want to um, show a pre-existing uh, application. Question, is it helpful at all to know grading, or do you just? I, for the most part, I let Android Studio do its thing. Okay. Um, the more you know, obviously, the better it is, uh, and it can be useful in troubleshooting. But for the most part, yeah, I don't, I don't get involved in that. I let, um, I let Gradle do, do its thing. So, is the programming language like similar to Java? Well, the Java is a programming language used in Android. All right, but again, remember what makes this an Android application? What makes it an Android application is it's developed with a certain set of components that. Um, allow you that, that, that emulate some of the common things that you'd have within a, uh, a handheld application. So, so it references several packages dedicated to it. Yeah, it references a bunch of packages. Absolutely. But the language it's, itself that's similar or, or is Java? It is Java code, right. Okay. All right. We'll be seeing this in a minute. Nice thing is, and again, this is one of the reasons that I do this, once I import it in Android Studio, if I do this, like, it will just, it will just pop up for me. 
Whereas with deep freeze on these machines, um, you run into that problem. Required, but it's good. I do have some Android devices somewhere. I have to dig them up that you can use, like for testing. I mean, they're like a hundred bucks now. Right. Like Amazon. So. Right. Now, this will either work or not. That's a brilliant statement, right? <laughs> what would cause it to work is if I didn't have a particular platform installed. And it looks to me like I have an issue. Let me bring this over. I didn't notice on the bottom it says, cause, fail to find target. Android 23. So when I downloaded this, I downloaded this earlier today, and I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, load the SDK version Android.23, and it's expecting, this application's expecting it. So uh, I'm actually kind of glad I got this here, all right? Because I can demonstrate what you do. I'll just click that. It's going to go through the process of installing that. I'll accept. Next. Hopefully this doesn't go too long. A canvas training. Uh, the other thing I would say, I think is pretty intuitive. Uh, what I would suggest is probably, uh, you know, give it a shot. See if you can find the stuff that you need to find, like the the, the assignments for this class and uploading the assignments for this class. And if you if you have any questions, like how you'd upload or something, uh, then we can just talk about that in the lab. 
I, I, I still not just straightforward. Yeah, I wouldn't anticipate that you have any problems. Have you used any sort of course management tool, like for an online class or? I haven't had a class in like 17 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because there's other things similar to Canvas, like Blackboard, and we had Angel before. And Installed the Android operating system on a laptop. No, so I have not. That, yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. We were thinking of maybe putting it on Raspberry Pi. Okay. Cool. I, that's doable. I would think so. Yeah. I remember years ago reading about people that installed Linux on like a first generation Xbox. So I think I, I, I think a lot of things are possible. I haven't, I haven't heard that you can even install Linux. Normally this tends to go quicker, so I don't know what's going on here. Normally it drags for a while and then boom, it, it like finishes, so. This is, that was the, the first one was the, uh, the SDK itself. This is the build tool. So this has a slightly different version of that as well. I am going to hit cancel. So we won't be able to run this app, but we will still be able to look at the app. Okay, we're going to look at some of the folders. First, we're going to look under at the app folder. And we're going to see a couple of folders inside of that. Go focus on the SRC folder. Short for source. Short, short for source. Okay, and underneath that, we have Java and we have resources. Okay. The Java is the Java code, obviously enough. This is a hello world application and, and in a nutshell all this really does is it just displays a screen that says welcome to Android. Okay. So um, there will be for every application uh, Android application, at least one activity. Think of an activity as the application presenting a screen to the user, all right, for them to do something. And in this case, the activity is pretty simple, right? It's presenting a screen for the user to look at, 
All right, that's all you can do with that. So you will see it is of type at compact activity, and it, the code itself does very little. And we'll look at that um, after we spend a little bit more time looking at some of the other resources. All right. The GUI part of this is going to be in the layout folder underneath resources. So underneath resources, there's going to be a layout file. And that layout file is an XML file. How many of you are familiar with XML? Okay. So some of you are at least somewhat. Essentially, XML is similar to HTML in the sense that tags are used to indicate things. So if we look at the XML file for this, I'm looking at the code version of this. You'll see what this is composed of. very simple layout. This tells you first of all that the layout is a linear layout whose orientation is vertical. What does that mean? That means that the controls or the views are stacked vertically on top of each other. Now we'll look at this on Thursday and if you want to play with this and, and do the same thing I did and just let it run to its completion um, and, and uh, let it install the build tools uh, as well. But that's one type of layout that you can have, where the things are oriented vertically or horizontally. It's like one of the simplest layouts that you can have. All right? They're just stacked on top of each other. All right? And it's simple, but it works for some basic things. The layout itself is comprised of two parts. All right? There is a text view, and there is a image view. So this is going to have a block of text, all right, and it is going to have uh, an image underneath it. Uh, the components within a screen are typically called views. Those views can be organized by what are called layouts. So we have a linear layout that contains several views. All right. For each of the views, notice there are properties that we can set right in the XML file. All right. Here's an interesting thing. Nothing is going to be hard coded. So there's a welcome message that says, you know, welcome to Android class or something like that. That's not hard coded though. Instead, instead we use a reference to a string resource. And if we look at that, it's a string resource. I know that because it says at string. And the string resource is called welcome. So how do I find that? I go into my values, into my strings XML, and welcome to Android development is the string that has a name of welcome. So we never refer to, we never have any hard-coded values, literals, in our GUIs or really anywhere else for the most part. All right? We point to resources. What's the advantage of doing that? What's the advantage of pointing to resources instead of having a hard-coded value? Because we could go into here and we could put in the string welcome to the Android app in there and it would work. Why do we use a string resource for that? So you can reuse code. So you can reuse code, so you can have consistency, right? If I have an email address, for example, an email address for contact, uh, I could define that as a literal, then if the email address changed for the contact, I wouldn't have to change it 100 places in my app. I just change the one string uh, variable, and it would be taken care of throughout the app. 
So yeah, reusability is a, is a good one. Any other reason that we could do this? That we might want to do this? It gets into internationalization of, a, of an app. If I have in my code a bunch of hard-coded strings, what would happen if I wanted to make a Spanish version of it? Or a French version? Or uh, a version in any other language? I would have to go in and make changes. I'd have to have, like, I'd have to go and code those changes and change the hard-coded values. In the case of multiple languages, what you simply do is you simply provide a different string file. The default string file is called strings.xml, all right? However, there is a, you could create a strings-fr.xml and a strings.sp.xml and so on using the predefined abbreviations for the languages. And then if the device happened to be set to being having a language of French or a language of Spanish, it would automatically, without us changing the program at all, go to the strings.fr file or the strings.sp. So there's a lot of good reasons for putting all our string values and other hard-coded things in its own string resource file. All right? And we do that with other things as well. We do that with colors. We can set a color name, and therefore we could have a different strings file if colors meant something in a different culture, for example. Or if someone is colorblind. To Someone's colorblind, exactly. We can have different dimensions, all right, how big something is. And those dimensions, we could put uh, a qualifier not for necessarily a different country, because you wouldn't necessarily want it bigger in Spanish than in French, but you could do it based on other characteristics of the device. Like if it was a tiny phone versus a giant tablet, you could put other dimensions uh, on there. So with these Android resources, there's something that we're going to talk about, and we're just introducing the idea of these resource files, but Shortly in the class, we're going to have something called um, the um, resource qualifiers. And that's where you can supply sort of a file that overrides the default under certain circumstances. So if the language of the device is Spanish, it will use a Spanish file. You could have a resource qualifier for a tablet versus a phone, or a large screen versus a small screen and so on down the line. So, under Java, you have the Java source code. Under resources, you have a set of all these resource files. The resource files that we looked at so far are the activity main and the strings. We'll look at more of these resource files in class on Thursday. I'll make sure all the imports are finished so that we can jump right into it. There's also other things that we'll look at next time. Drawables, that's any images that you might have. There's the bug, it's gonna appear. And launch icons. Notice we have several launch icons. The folders start the same, but they end with what's called a resource qualifier. If it's high density, it will use this icon. If it's medium density, it will use this icon. If it's extra high density, it will use that. If it is extra, extra high def, uh, definition, rather, it will use that. And if it is triple X, it will use that. Here are different values based on the width and height of the screen. All right. And we'll take
take a look at, at all these things um, next time when we go and and uh, and and do this, run this. But I did want to introduce this to you. So, what is your first homework assignment? Your first homework assignment is to simply. Import the tip calculator app. All right. The tip calculator app is one of the apps that you can download from the textbook site. Right here. Then I want you to get a couple of screen prints in Android Studio. So I want you to run the app in, on a virtual device. I want you to show the main XML file a screen print of you viewing the code for the main XML file um, in graphic mode and in code view. I want you to I want to show I want to see the the tip calculator Java file, and then I want to see the code for the uh, Android manifest uh, .xml. So you'll simply go and do screen captures, and essentially what you'll turn is a Word document with five screen captures on it. So you're not writing any code here. Really, uh, the purpose of this exercise is to make sure that you can install Visual Studio, the have um, I'm sorry, not Visual Studio, Android Studio on a machine, and that you can open up, run an app, and identify different parts of it. We'll continue to go over this on Thursday. All right, any questions? All right. Um, that's all I had for today. You are welcome to go to lab. Allegedly, there's new machines in our lab, uh, and Android Studio is involved, but I can't verify that. Uh, is anyone going to lab? Okay. All right. I will normally ask that since this is like the last class of the day for me. Don't think of me as trying to discourage you to go to lab. All right. I, I just want to know because if no one's going to lab, I'm going to go home. All right. And, but if, it certainly is your lab time if you want to come to lab and use that. All right, thank you. We'll see you either in lab or on Thursday. Just export it like to a PDF or something. Export it to a standard format. All right. And is this due? This is like due next week. Next week. I never make an assignment and have it due the same week. It's always due the following.